lecture, I would like to introduce Professor Sven Hansbo from Sweden. He is now Emeritus Professor in Geophysics at the Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden. Sven is a former president of Swedish Geophysical Society. He was the chairman of the International Conference in Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering 1981 in Stockholm. Sven, Professor Sven Hansbo has been involved with the, the whole life with the theory of vertical drain piling, especially the sediment reducing pipes. Professor Sven Hansbo's first visit to Vietnam was in 1979. It's very, very uh, more than 30 years ago. And he has three Vietnamese doctoral students, Professor Tien, me, and Dr. Luthi Tien. And organic soils, for example, kirtia and peat, we have been using electrosmosis, vertical drainage, and deep mixing. I have been involved in the keynotes carried out by the European uh, Eurocodes, and we have been helped by the Japanese in these uh, projects. There are Eurocodes, both regarding vertical drainage and deep mixing. Now, I want to show you some of the... Oh, I'm sorry. The first thing regarding the clay soils and organic soils is to determine the compression characteristics of the soil. And this is usually carried out by the aid of odometer tests. In some cases, we can also use triaxial tests in which no radial deformation is allowed to take place. The samples used, utilized for odometer tests are usually taken by means of piston samples and should be as undisturbed as possible. It is very important to find the correct value of the pre-conservation pressure. As you can see here in this picture, the pre it's very important to know exactly if the soil is normally <coughs> consolidated or if it is over-consolidated. And this is carried out by means of a dominant test, if I show you because there you can determine the pre-consolidation pressure in the soil. Coefficient of consolidation in horizontal pore water flow and not only in vertical pore water flow, which is determined in the conventional odometer tests. But, and the linear presentation could be presented in this way by the, the method determined by its Selfosch in his doctoral thesis. There is also another possibility to check the value of the pre consolidation pressure determined by a dominant test, namely on the basis of undrained shear strength and liquid limit. So we can find that the pre consolidation pressure of the soil is equal to 2.22 times the undrained shear strength divided by the liquid limit value. that shortens the drainage paths created by the excess pore water pressure caused by loading. You will have a, a pore water flow in horizontal directions towards the drains. And this is usually the, the, Well, if you, if you have drain installations in thick clay layers, the hydraulic gradient in horizontal direction towards the drains will be much larger than in the vertical direction. The consolidation process will thereby be considerably accelerated. 
In the theoretical analysis of the effect of vertical drainage, each drain is assumed to dewater a circular cylinder, soil column, whose volume equals the parallelepiped formed by four negative neighboring drains in two adjacent rows. In order to make this parallel epiped coincide in the best possible way with a circular cylinder, the drains are mostly installed in equilateral triangular pattern. This yields a, key, a, a, a diameter value of the, the, the column dewatered by a drain, 1.05 times the drain spacing. If the drains are installed in square pattern, the D value will be 1.13 times the drain spacing. Drains is almost equal. You see, the one important thing is the permeability of the vertical drain in longitudinal direction of the drain. And that is called the, the, the discharge capacity of the drain. And that should be really high enough so that the drainage will detect in the way you expect. The, the excess pore water pressure in the area surrounding the drain is of course affected by Preloading, we can put very high load on the soil surface to guarantee that you have a, a very high excess pore water pressure, which causes pore water to flow into the drain. But you can also use a vacuum method, which is another method of determining of, of causing excess pore water flow to or the pore water flow to take place in the direction towards the drain. This is a matter which is one of the favorite problems I've worked with. In the middle of the 19th century, the French engineer, Darcy, discovered that the rate of flow V in water saturated sand followed the simple relationship that the flow water is equal to the hydraulic permeability times the hydraulic gradient. Darcy's law is generally considered to be valid for laminar soil flow in all types of soil. However, the deviations from Darcy's law have been found to occur in clay soils at small hydraulic gradients. Considering the character of the internal forces in the pore water, electric double layer forces, absorption forces, etc., it is logical to assume that the porosity of the clay would seemingly, seemingly increase up to a certain point with increasing hydrodynamic forces. This has been observed in several experiments. So this is one of the main, shall we say, the main interest I have in vertical drainage to show that this is really the case which one has to take into consideration, the deviation from Darcy's law. I call it either non darcy flow or exponential flow. And you can see here that you have, this is the, the type of uh, per, uh, correlation between flow and hydraulic gradient, which has been found in these experiments. And you can see here that these values of I0 and IL the test I carried out in my doctoral thesis showed that I0 was approximately 1 uh, to 3, and IL was uh, approximately 5 to 6 or something, and this leads to a, 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 an exponent equal to 1.5. validity of Darcy's law. And this is the, the consultation carried out by the aid of non darcy flow. And, it, and here you see the coefficients used in this uh, solution based on non darcy flow. But of course there is also a solution based on 
Darcy, validity of Darcy's law. And these are all given in the paper which uh, you find in the, this uh, presentation. It is, I, don't, I don't want to, to discuss these equations because these you can uh, try to find yourself uh, in, the, in the paper. There is also the excess pore water pressure which is uh, produced by the, the uh, loading of the soil and the vertical drainage. And you have the, here the equation based on validity of those and non-validity of those is low. And this is the excess forward pressure based on validity of Darcy's law. And because at, when you study the effect of vertical drainage, you usually um, you measure the sediment at, uh, at various levels in the soil, the ground surface, uh, and at different depths. And you measure also the uh, pore water pressure created by loading of the soil. And these are conventional methods of studying the effect of the vertical drainage. I will come back to that later on, so you can see the, the difference you can have in the two methods. There is a correlation, lambda is the coefficient of consolidation in Landar's inflow, and C sub H is the coefficient of consolidation in Darcy inflow. And you can find the correlation between these two coefficients of consolidation in the, depending upon the hydraulic gradient created by the loading operation. If you take into account also the, the, shall I say, the vertical uh, flow of water in one dimension of consolidation, the, 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 the two equations, non-Darcy flow and uh, exponential flow, or, or uh, shall we say, Darcy <laughs> flow and uh, exponential flow, are just corrected in this simple way. I'll come back to that later on also. Of course, here you use, in both cases, you use the, the validity of Darcy's law, the law the, when you study the effect of the poor water flow in vertical one dimensional direction. The, this is a case which is rather interesting. The, the test field at Swedeni. 25 km west of Stockholm was established in 1957 by the Swedish Geotechnical Institute by order of the Swedish government for the purpose of finding if the place was suitable for a new airfield. All test areas were provided with sand drains except one, test area number four, which you can see on this picture. The draining operation was carried out as follows. First, the topsoil was removed to a depth of about 25 centimeters and replaced with sand and gravel, about 50 to 70 centimeters in thickness, on which the drainage equipment was to be operated. A hollow mandrel of steel, 14 meters in length. You can see the depth of this soil here is a maximum 14 meters. But, so we had a had hollow mandrel of steel, 14 meter length, 10, 15 centimeter in inner diameter. It was driven down by means of a pile driver with 1,200 kilograms hammer and the maximum fall of the hammer of 0.5 meter on the working table and was then withdrawn, leaving a sand column of about 18 centimeter in diameter in the clay. Test area number three is 35 meter diameter with 1.5 meter drain spacing and an overlap of 2.2 meter of gravel. To take precaution against possible slides, this area was surrounded by loading bone, 12 meter in width and 0.7 meter in thickness. 
And test area number four is 35 meter in diameter and undrained with an overload of 1.5 meter of gravel. Vertical and horizontal settlement observations and poor pressure observations were carried out in order to study the average vertical consolidation. The settlement observations were carried out at the ground surface at a depth of 1.5, 2.5, 5 meter and 7.5 meters of depth. The load place of test area number three was reduced 1.5 meter of gravel after about three and a half years. The use of sand grains can be associated with certain limitations. The sand for the drains must be chosen with great carefulness to ensure that the discharge capacity of the drain is high enough. The diameter of sand drains used internationally very often from 16 to, to 50 centimeter. The installation of sand drains with mandrel closed at bottom can cause vertical cracks in the clay surrounding the drain which are filled with sand when the mandrel is withdrawn. This can reduce the decrease of permeability in the remoted zone. To reduce the disturbance effects caused by drain installation, prefabricated sand drains with a diameter of 5 cm, so-called sand wicks, enclosed in geotextile, exist. Here you can see one of these sand grains installed in at square B. And you can see now that when the mandel is withdrawn, the sand, which was four meters above the surface of this uh, gravel, has now been reduced because the, 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 the diameter of the sand is increased when the mandel is withdrawn. Here you can see the results of, of observations. The top <laughs> curve there is the, the, the undrained area, and the, the one where you can see that the settlement has more or less uh, been limited now, and no further settlement, more or less is the area where the load was reduced after three and a half years. Here you can see the analysis of the undrained area. And what you see here is the recession after one and a half year and after uh, I cannot see now, but it is, it is uh, 14 years. Yeah. yeah. And the unbroken line is representing non Darcian flow, and the broken line represents the validity of Darcy's law. The analysis has been carried out on these assumptions. You can see here the validity of Darcy's law and the non-Darcy law, the, the correlation between hydraulic gradient and flow velocity used in the analysis of the undrained area. And here you can see after a very long time that the assumption based on non-Darcy flow has a much, much better correlation between observations than the assumption based on validity of Darcy's law. So this is obviously quite clear that there is a deviation from Darcy's law in, in this type of soil. So the sorption forces and the, the electric double layer causes this difference in behavior between flow and hydraulic gradient. Here you can also see a comparison between 
the observations and the analysis at squared b. And you can see here that the coefficient of consolidation lambda has a much, much better agreement with the observations than the coefficient of consolidation in dark scene flow, C sub H. So this is again a confirmation that there is a deviation from Darcy's law, which one should use in the analysis of vertical drainage. Here you can see dam drains, or PVDs, as some call these drains, prefabricated vertical drains. And there are a number of vertical drains existing. The first one, was invented by Shellman. It was called Cardboard Wick. The Cardboard Wick. And he uh, used this installation all right, uh, already uh, very early in the 1930s. He was the managing director of the Swedish Technical Institute. He also invented a drain installation machine for the cardboard wicks, presented in 1939. And nowadays a great number of PFA drains exist on the market. You can see there are several. These are presented in the doodle code on prefabricated vertical drains. Here you can see uh, an installation of uh, prefabric vertical drains to a depth of 40 meters in Singapore. So it's a rather big mandrel, but this was you. The discharge capacity of various types of drains is, of course, dependent on the depth of drain installation and the size, this, this is re represented by the size of L in the analysis and the permeability of the surrounding soil. If the discharge capacity is too low, a delay of the consolidation process will occur with a maximum value at depth L. If, for example, you have installed drains with a discharge capacity of 500 cubic meters per year in a 20 meter thick clay layer underlain by sand, you can expect a delay in the consolidation process of 1% at 10 meter depth. If instead the soil consists of silty clay, the delay would be about 5%. So it depends very much upon the, the soil surrounding the drain. And you can see here also that you have the, the very high delays if you have very deep drain installations. And this is L, so it means that if, if you install a drain in a soil and you do not reach a permeable layer underneath the drain, then at the tip of the drain you would have a very high delay in the concentration process. A method which is used to determine the, the degree of consolidation, you have to, it is very important to know the magnitude of the primary consolidation settlement. And this can be determined according to Asaoka. Asaoka's method is based on the following procedure. The settlement observed at different equal time intervals, delta t, are plotted in a diagram with Si minus 1 as ordinate and Si as abscissa, where index i minus 1 refers to time t minus delta t and index i to time t. This would result in a linear correlation which extended to SI minus 1 
equal to SI gives the value, well, shall I say, it, it, which extended to SI minus 1 equal to 0 gives the value of A in this uh, uh, diagram and the inclination angle of the straight line. The primary consultation settlement is obtained when SI minus 1 and SI become equal. So this is very, a very simple method of determining the pre-consolidation pressure. Or the, the end of the primary consolidation, I would say. Or the primary consolidation settlement. I will show you some observations made in different test areas. In connection with the planning of a new international airfield in Bangkok, three test areas were arranged in order to form the basis for design of soil improvement by pre-learning and vertical drainage. The result observed in test area TS3 is shown here. The crest width of TS3 was 14.8 meter and the bottom width 40 meter. It was provided with an approximately 10 meter wide loading bone, 1.5 meter thick. The field place of the era corresponded to a load of 80 kilonewtons per square meter. The drains were installed in a square pattern with a spacing of 1 meter, which yields a D value of 1.13 meter. The monitoring system consisted of vertical segment meters placed on the soil surface and a different depth and an inclinometers to study the horizontal displacements. It's much better. This is another case, a test deal. 125 by 45 meter was arranged for comparing the efficiency of prefabricated vertical band drains, type zero drain and olive drain, with that of displacement type sand drains. The test field was divided into three sections of equal size with drain spacings 1.1, 1.4, and 1.6 feet in an equilateral triangular pattern. The test area was loaded with 2.2 meter of sand and gravel. The delta Q equal to 40 kilonewtons per square meter. The soil consisted of great, slightly overconsolidated clay, about 8 meters in thickness, slightly organic to a depth of 1.2 meter, um, 1 to 2 meters, and bald with silt seams below a depth of about 5 meters. The primary consolidation sediment calculated on the basis of the odometry compression ratios and an overconsolidation of 5 kilopascal was estimated at 1.1 meter. The settlement process observed in the test sections provided the zero drains and only drains was nearly the same. Here you can see the result obtained in the test sections provided with sand drains and geo drains and using Asaoka's method for determination of the primary consolidation settlement, we find for the section provided with zero drains S primary consolidation equal to 1.09 meter and for the section provided with sand drains, primary consolidation equal to 1.11 meters. And these values are in excellent agreement with the settlement estimated on the basis of the odometry tests. The analysis of the consolidation process based here on the following assumptions. DW equal to 0.80 meter and DS equal to 0.36 meter for sand drains and DW equal to 0.066 meter and DS equal to 0.19 meter for geodrains and the relation between the permeability in the undisturbed soil and the, 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 the remote zone, the remote zone is equal to 4 L equal to 4 meter and CD, the coefficient of conservation of the vertical line of undimensional growth is 0.2 square meter per year. Again, you can see that the agreement between analysis and observations is better on the assumption of exponential flow. Well, the same, I would say, is the case 
with the Portola test. This is a, a, a test in Italy. You can again see, I, I have very short time now, so I have to be hardly on. on. And you can see again that you have much better agreement between the non-Darcy flow than with Darcy flow. And here again you have from Ardanda, you can see you have a very high overloading in this case, nearly 400 kilometers per square meter. And in this case, you can see that there is more or less a better agreement between the assumption based on Dorsey flow and on non Dorsey flow, but there's a very small difference. And finally, I'll show you again a, a comparison between settlement observations and poor pressure observations. And you can see it is very important that the poor pressure meter, the piezometer, is placed in the correct place, if the piezometer uh, comes too close to the drain, you have a much higher degree of consolidation than according to settlement observations. Therefore, I would say that you have to be very careful when you measure the uh, degree of consolidation observed on poor pressure observations. It is much more reliable to trust the values observed by settlement observations. Thank you very much. This is Thank you. Uh, invite uh, Professor Nguyen Chiang Tien. He is my best professor of all the